Soil investigation or soil exploration in construction can be defined as the field and laboratory investigation performed on subsoil to obtain information on its strength and the compressibility. These tests determine several stress parameters of the soil that help in the analysis of foundation and other retaining structures or buildings. Soil exploration is performed based on the magnitude and the importance of the project. For example, projects like buildings and power plants demand soil exploration within a localized area. But in the case of transmission lines, roads and railway lines, they will require soil exploration that would extend along a narrow path for a longer distance. Hence, even if the principle of soil exploration remains the same, the program and the methodologies adopted for each project in case of soil exploration will vary. So in this video, we will be discussing the basic objectives of soil exploration and the major steps involved in soil investigation. The main objectives of soil exploration is to identify the key soil characteristics such as compressibility, strength and hydrological conditions which have a greater impact on the design and the safety of construction project. It is used to select the appropriate type and depth of foundation for a specific structure. It is used to determine the quantity and the quality of materials required for construction. Soil exploration helps to establish the foundation capacity to bear loads. It also helps to gauge the depth of the groundwater and the potentially corrosive effects of water and soil on foundation materials. It helps to predict the expected settlement of a building, to investigate the causes of failures in the existing structures. It also helps to formulate construction strategies tailored to changing subsurface conditions. It also helps to assess the lateral ground pressure that is exerted on retaining walls and abutments. Before starting any construction project, the initial step is the site investigation. During the site investigation, we explore the properties of soil, we determine how capable the soil is and based on which we determine what kind of foundation has to be constructed and the following structure. In civil engineering, there is a branch called geotechnical engineering where we study all these tests and theories for deriving the soil parameters. Basically, in geotechnical engineering, you start with studying what are the properties of soil, followed by what kind of tests that you conduct on soil to determine those properties. And next is how you design foundation basically below structures, structures that is being laid over the soil based on these properties determined. So this is a brief view about how geotechnical engineering explores the basic starting step of a construction project. So here let's explain in detail what are the stages that is being performed in a soil exploration program. A planner before developing a soil exploration program, he or she investigates the type and size and the importance of the project. Small projects demand only a preliminary investigation, while some complex ones would require both preliminary as well as detailed investigation. Let's check the stages in site exploration one by one. Number one is site reconnaissance, followed by preliminary investigation of the soil, then we go for a detailed investigation of the soil, and final is the report making. Number one is site reconnaissance. Site reconnaissance is the initial step in investigating a location for a construction project. During this phase, the site is visually inspected and information about its natural features are gathered. The key things we look for during site reconnaissance include checking for drainage ditches and areas where the waste is dumped, determining the groundwater level by examining the wells on the site, identifying the presence of springs, swamps and similar features, noting high watermarks on bridges and tall buildings to understand the flood levels, assessing the type of plants and the quality of the soil in the area, reviewing the historical data on events like landslides, floods and soil cracks in that region, analyzing aerial photos, building blueprints, geological maps and other documents related to the site, examining deep excavation to understand the layers of soil, observing cracks in existing structures that indicate settling. So this is a mixed concept of site reconnaissance that can be done for a new project or for an existing project. Some may be included, some other factors can also be included during the site reconnaissance, which is purely dependent on what kind of construction project is in your hand.
Number two is the plan for preliminary investigation of the soil. During the preliminary site investigation, a few boreholes are drilled from the distributed locations for soil samples. So the samples collected is taken for field and laboratory test to determine the strength characteristics of the soil. These lead to preliminary drawings and design. If the study is unsuitable, we contact the procedure at different location in using the repeated procedures. Number three is the plan for a detailed investigation of the soil. The planning for a detailed soil investigation includes a detailed study of the geographical condition of the area. This includes the collection of available information from the site like topography and geographical maps, topographical features, hydraulic conditions, water table fluctuations, flood conditions, etc. and the access to the site. Preparing the layout plan of the project, preparing the borehole layout plan, the depth and the number of boreholes, Marking on layout, additional types of soil investigation, prepare specification and guidelines for the field investigation of various elements of the soil investigation, prepare specification and guidelines for laboratory testing of the samples collected, presentation of the field and laboratory test results, writing of the reports, etc. etc. So this is a major process mainly involved when the project is large, the area under investigation is very large, you will have to undergo various test samples from different distributed locations. So you need a proper plan about how many samples, how many depth at what location are to be charted so that you can have a record about all those factors. Now once all these samples are collected, we undergo various type of tests like standard penetration test and other tests which has to be recorded on a final report. So last process is the report making, the report of site exploration. Following the completion of either initial or the comprehensive site exploration procedures, it is imperative to create a report. A subsoil investigation or exploration report typically comprises the subsequent section. We'll have an introduction, which serves as an opening to the report presenting its purpose and the context, a site investigation scope, the description of the intended structure, it offers insight into the proposed construction project, elucidating its purpose and the rationale behind the site investigation. Site reconnaissance finding that find observations and findings from the initial site assessment. Site exploration particular like details of the quantity, location and depth of boreholes along with specifies regarding soil sampling procedures involved. Number six is the method employed in site exploration and their outcomes. This section elucidates the technique applied during site exploration and summarizes the result. This clearly means that the method that is being employed to drill holes and take the sample vary based on what kind of soil it is. If the soil is very hard or the soil layer is rocky in nature, we need to undergo a very unique kind of drilling procedure. But this differs when the soil is very sandy or clay in nature or if it is below the water table level. So there are various boring methods like rotary drilling, auger drilling, percussion drilling, etc. which can be involved based on the type of soil. That has to be mentioned on the final report. Number seven is the laboratory test and their outcomes. The report elaborates on the laboratory test conducted on the soil samples obtained during exploration and the results which are crucial for assessing the soil properties. Number eight is the ground table information and the location. Number nine is the recommendation for potential improvements. If the site is very poor in strength and very unstable, we need to provide certain enhancement to facilitate future construction. So any remarks on this can be updated on the report. Number 10, the suggested foundation type and the structural aspects. So based on the study of the soil, capability of the soil in hand, we need to suggest a foundation that is apt or beneficial for the construction. So this report represents a final conclusion or a remark on what kind of foundation type can be provided based on the properties concluded. And number 11 is a conclusion where the report concludes summarizing key findings and the recommendation emphasizing their significance. So this is the whole overview about the report that is being submitted after a soil exploration. The key parameters can vary based on the project, based on the country and the rules and regulations followed. The video is a concise introduction to soil exploration and its different phases with the upcoming video focusing on various techniques for obtaining soil samples in soil investigation. If you found this video informative and want to delve deeper into civil engineering fundamentals and the construction industry, please show your support by liking, sharing and subscribing to Civil Engineering Fanatics.